All right, so we are going to talk about the lab report for gaseous equilibrium, also known as the NO2 lab. For page one, you'll have the lab report form. For page two, you'll have the graph. This is absorbance. Absorbance doesn't have units. So it'll be absorbance versus time in seconds. And you'll have a title for this graph. What you're gonna notice is that you're gonna have a hot tube and a cold tube. And you're gonna see sort of a pattern that develops, something that might look similar that we've seen in class. Make sure that you label that appropriately and that your axes are labeled. And then pages three on, you're gonna show me all of your calculations. I wanna see all of your calculations for that. And then the last page is the carbon copy of the data. I am going to make one minor modification to the lab report form. Again, I'll show you that in just a moment. This lab report is due the next time you come for lab. So note that. And then let's come over here to your lab report form. You'll fill out the lab report form, and then it asks you to write a paragraph explaining the plot. So that's the graph that I just showed you. And then it has this thing here, the statement that reads, the NO2 dimerization reaction exhibits blah, blah, blah sensitivity. In your paragraph below, relate Blaine Shadley's predictions about that temperature sensitivity to the equilibrium constant to be calculated. So when it reads here, the NO2 dimerization exhibits temperature sensitivity, don't stress, all that's referring to is this equation right here. So you have two NO2 yielding N2O4. You just need to tell me, because again, this is an exothermic reaction, how heat is being affected or how it's affecting rather your equilibrium. So this is an exothermic reaction, so heat would be a product or reactant. You should answer that first. So if you're adding heat to the system, it's a stress. Le Chalier says it counteracts that stress, and then you'll indicate how your plot describes what's happening based on what you already know from class material on Le Chalier's principle. So you will do that below on that sheet. So let's talk about the actual lab calculation. In your lab, it actually tells you, I believe in step 15, calculate the molar density of NO2 at approximately room temperature. So I have some data that I took, we generated the NO2, and this is data that was taken, so at 20 degrees, the absorbance based on NO2 was 0.21. I'm gonna use that data to do step one, or number 15 in your lab protocol, and it says find the molar density of NO2. To do that, we will use absorbance is equal to this epsilon, which is molar absorptivity, times B, which is the path length of the cell, times C, the concentration or the molar density. So for this, the lab tells us in the protocol what this E is equal to. And it is equal to 2.95 times 10 to the second liters, I believe this is per mole, Seconds, let me double check that. Uh, liters per mole times centimeters. So that is your E, that came directly from our protocol in that statement. We know that B is equal to one because that's the path length, that's the light goes through the path length of the cell, which is roughly one centimeter. And we already know what the absorbance is because it came from the data. Again, this will come from your data table, not mine. But for me at 20, the absorbance was equal to 0.21. So I'd have 0.21 is equal to the molar absorptivity times B, and I solve that for C. And C would give me my molar absorptivity. And for me, the molar absorptivity at room temperature was 0.00071 molar. And this is the molar absorptivity of NO2 because when we're taking the absorbance, it is measuring the absorbance of NO2, which is the red colored gas. So we have that molar absorptivity. Step one is done. In the next step in your protocol, which is I believe step 16, it now asks you to find what is the molar density of N2O4 in the same reaction flask. And to find that at room temperature at roughly 20, we have to go to the equilibrium statement. And equilibrium tells me for every two moles of NO2, 
that consume, reproduce one mole of N2O4. Now again, they're in equilibrium, so the rate forward and rate reverse are equal. But we can evaluate this. K here is known as the concentration, because we're dealing with concentration units for this one. You'll notice on this particular lab, they're all K sub C, so we're dealing with concentration units. So N2O4 all over the concentration of NO2 squared, so nothing different there. In your lab protocol, and I'll pull this up so that you can see it, you have a chart that gives you different K values at different temperatures. And this is in your lab protocol, not on your lab report form. So here it is in step 16, at different temperatures, it gives you a K value. So guesstimate roughly if you end up at 23.2, use the one at 23, for example. If you're at 21.8, use the one at 22, so you'll have to round a little bit there. I'm gonna use the one, I believe I have at 20, I'm at 20 degrees, so I'm going to use the K sub C of 248. Now again, I'm looking for this value, so that means I have to have a molar density of NO2, and I need the K value at 20 degrees. So I have a K value from this chart, and it ends up being 248. I calculated the molar density of NO2 previously at 20 degrees, so I'm going to plug that in and that ends up being 0 0.00071, and I have to square it according to the equilibrium constant. And then lo and behold, the only variable I have then is the molar density of my N2O4. And so when I calculate that, I end up with 0 0.00088 molar. So I've done step two, or in your lab protocol, it's number 16. So I have, to recap, found the molar density of NO2 by noting what the molar absorptivity was given in your lab, noting what V the passage was given in your lab, and I knew the temperature and the absorbance at which it occurred. From that, I could then find the molar absorptivity of N2O4 because I know what K is at 20 degrees, and I know what the molar absorptivity is, the equilibrium, at 20 degrees because we just calculated it and I can find your N2O4 at 20 degrees. The next step then tells us in 17, now that we've described the NO2, N2O4 system at 20 degrees, we're gonna heat it up to roughly 40 degrees. And let's see, we know that as temperature changes, the equilibrium constant changes and therefore the equilibrium pressures change or concentrations in this case. So in this one, it wants us to now figure out an equilibrium table and figure out what's happening at 40 degrees. So at 40 degrees, roughly, I have a molar absorpti or an absorptivity, uh, or absorbance, rather, of 0.26, and that's of my NO2. So you can see that things have changed as we've gone from 20 to 41. So let's see what that looks like. So it tells us to set up a table. So I'm gonna erase this and get our equilibrium chart set up. From that, we know at the beginning of this, initially when we start, we start with 0 0.00071 for that one. And we know, let me make sure, it looks like I have a number off here, and I do, so if you'll forgive me of that, this calculation is not correct. It's actually 1, 3, so forgive that. Um, I just jumped ahead there. So that concentration, when you do this math, it ends up coming out to be 0 0.00013. So in this next part, initially, I have this concentration, which means after I do the correct math, lo and behold, I have that. And here's my initial. I know that there's gonna be a change because we have to head towards equilibrium because we're stressing the system. And so at equilibrium, something happens. And how we find out what happens at equilibrium is to figure out what changed. And so what we'll do is we can find the equilibrium concentration for NO2 in the same way we did in step one. And that is we know that the absorbance is equal to EBC. I have the absorbance at roughly 40, which is 0 0.26. 
I know the molar absorptivity given by the lab. I'm also given the path length from the lab, and then C is that molar absorptivity. So when I calculate that C from these values, and I bet you this is the number I put up previously, it is, we end up with 0 0.00088 molars. Now this is the molar absorptivity of NO2 at that new equilibrium. So here's the prep, here's the actual temperature, that's the absorbance. Absorbance is measuring NO2 gas, and it's telling me how much is there at 40 degrees, roughly. So I'm gonna put that value in here, and that tells me the change. Now notice something very interesting. I am producing more NO2 gas. So that means that I am going in this direction. My equilibrium is shifting in this direction, which means that if it's shifting in that direction, I am losing or consuming in 204, which is one of the things we talked about. That should make sense because we've already talked about this reaction being exothermic, which means that heat is a product. If I add heat, that's the stress, Blake Shiley says the counteraction is I've got to get rid of that heat, so it's going to shift to the left to make more NO2, hence the higher absorbance and the higher concentration. So essentially then, when we look at this, notice this would be plus, it's got two, two x here, minus x here. So my equilibrium value, I've got 0 0.00013 minus x, so we've got to find some x there in order to figure that out. I'm going to erase this to give us a little more space, and then here we know that 0 0.00071 plus 2x is equal to 0 0.00088. All these zeros should be in there. And then I solve for x. You do some math and solve for x for that. And when I solve for x, I end up with 0 point, I'm gonna double check, four zeros, one, two, three, four, eight, five. That's what my x is. I can then plug that x in and that's going to give me my equilibrium concentration of N2O4. And when I do that, I end up with 0 0.00045 concentration units of my N2O4. So now I've set up this table, found this equilibrium concentration NO2 from my data and the fact that A is equal to EBC, and then I could find that change, plug it in to find the equilibrium pressure. So can I now find a K at 40 degrees? Absolutely, because again, my K is based on what I saw before, concentration of N2O4 over the concentration of NO2 squared, and I know what the equilibrium concentration is of my N2O4, it ends up being that 0 0.00045, all divided by the concentration of my NO2, which ends up being 0 0.00088 squared. And when I find that value, it tells me that the new equilibrium constant ends up being 58 for me. Now again, this is all based on that initial data that you took. So I evaluated K at 40. In the last few steps, it also tells you to find K at roughly two degrees or zero degrees Celsius. So you'll do the same process over again from step three on. So this piece right here, you're gonna have to do at zero and find the K at zero degrees. This K is at roughly 40 degrees Celsius. So now you get to have some fun on your own and find K at approximately zero degrees Celsius or two degrees Celsius or however close you are to that point. Let me look through and make sure I've covered everything because there's a lot going on here. And if you have questions, as always, just let me know.